Well, joining us now from Edinburgh is the former SNP MP, George Kerevan, who addressed today's rally. And here in the studio is the former Labour MP and current Chief Executive of Scotland and Union, Pamela Nash, and the journalist and commentator, Morris Smith. Thank you all very much indeed for joining us this evening. Um, George, the rally today demanded the immediate triggering of Independence Referendum 2. Why is now the time? Well, there'll never be a better time. When it comes to doing the day job, we now know that this government is comprehensively the worst government, the Westminster government, Theresa May's government, that we've seen in a century. It's not just that we're facing a hard Brexit, which will wreck the Scottish economy. Um, they, they, they've been so caught up trying to protect the Tory party and keep its divisions together that they can't do the other things. That's why there's the mess over universal credit. So I think Scotland has the chance to walk away from this to look after itself, to look after its old, to look after its young. Let's do the job now. And we weren't demanding, we were simply a gentle reminder to the First Minister that she should be getting, the, getting, getting on with the Indy, Indy Ref 2. And, and George Caravan, if an Indy Ref 2 is triggered, is the movement ready for it? I think the movement's been ready for 18 months. I mean, people have been, you know, start restarting the old uh, uh, um, yes branches, getting campaigning. We saw a march of 100,000 people in Edinburgh demanding independence uh, only at the end of, end of last year. Besides, things have changed because of Brexit. Um, everybody, most people anyway, now support a second referendum, whether it's a second referendum on the EU or a second referendum on um, Scottish independence. Second referendums are in the air. Let's, let's go for the one that really matters that could really change things, which is Indie Ref 2 in Scotland. Uh, Pamela Nash, how concerned are you that Brexit might trigger another independence referendum? Well, I would hope that the Scottish Government and the UK Government will listen to the people of Scotland. And every poll in the last year has shown that people, the people of Scotland do not want another independence referendum. They are not seeking Scottish independence. Um, we heard from Nicola Sturgeon, the SNP, that we would get a boost in the, the poll figures for independence after Brexit. That just didn't happen. We haven't seen that. And I think the last thing that people want at the moment and the last thing people need is further constitutional chaos. Do you think Nicola Sturgeon may call another one? Um, well... She, she, may want to, she may want to call another one, but now is not the time. Um, Morris Smith, you voted yes in 2014. Do you feel that now is now the time for a, a second independence referendum? Um, well, if I, was, if I were a yes activist, I might feel that because they've been feeling that ever since they lost in 2014. I'm not... Nicola Sturgeon strikes me as a very cautious politician, and we've been hearing about a second referendum for quite a while, usually uh, in response to things that have happened over the last few years. I'd, I covered uh, an SNP conference a couple of years ago where I had news desks in England phoning me up saying, so when is the referendum? Because Nicola Sturgeon had given a, a very stirring kind of um, speech to the faithful. Um, but she doesn't strike me as somebody who's going to rush into a referendum here. And unlike George, I, I don't have that sense that uh, there is going to be some kind of response to Brexit that leads to a very quick referendum in Scotland. I mean, if she, if she did call one and there was one soon, I mean, could the yes side win? Well, they could, but the polls, as Pamela has pointed out, don't say they're going to. And I would say if there's a lesson from uh, not just the Scottish referendum, but the, the Brexit referendum, actually, to me, you should only call a referendum that you know you're going to win. David Cameron called one, uh, Alex Salmond called one. Alex Salmond actually, with hindsight, did remarkably well because the mm -hmm. vote for uh, support for yes was much lower than it turned out to be in 2014, but it still wasn't enough. Uh, let's put that to George. You should only call a referendum that you know you're going to win, and the polls are consistently saying that you wouldn't. Well, well people only make their minds up when they're confronted with a choice. If, if the logic is we do nothing until some way by osmosis um, people suddenly come round to independence, it will never happen. Now, the first re Scottish independence referendum in, in 2014, it started off with the polls saying only 25% of people wanted independence. We ended up at 45%, would have been over 50 if we hadn't been lied to. 
if we call the independence referendum in the current situation where we've got constitutional chaos, where we've got economic chaos, it gives people the chance to walk away from that and look at the common sense of looking after Scotland for the Scots. I think people will change their mind. I think we'll get well over the 50%. People would change their mind, according to George, and also they're starting up higher in the polls than they did in 2014. But I think the the independence supporting side would need to make the argument that independence would fix the problems that we're facing just now. There's no evidence to show that. Um, everything that we said in 2014 is still the case in terms of the impact it would have on Scotland's economy. And when it comes to the EU, Scotland is not going to um, separate from the rest of the UK and automatically become an EU state again. They would need to apply. They would need to meet the criteria. We need to slash our deficit in a way that would cause real pain to people in their everyday lives. And I, I just can't see the people of Scotland voting for that. Uh, George, what's your response to that? I mean, you couldn't promise that, that we would stay in the EU, could you? Well, taking lessons in economics from a Conservative government that just spent a billion pounds of your money and the viewers' money bribing the DUT, DUP to stay in office, that's not politics, that's not democracy. Yeah, everyone knows now that we were lied to over the EU, we've been taken out of the EU, taken out of Europe, all our economic relationships with Europe are being broken, we were told that would not happen if we voted yes to stay in the Union uh, with, with the UK. That's, that's all water under okay, the bridge. But the EU will welcome us back with okay, open arms. George Kennevin, but would be would we be able to have one with the UK government not veto it? Well, um, if you take the Good Friday Agreement, the, the Good Friday Agreement says the people of Northern Ireland have the right to hold a border poll when they want, as often as they want. That's the gold standard in democracy. I can't really see it. Perhaps the Tories will, will, will elucidate, but I can't see that what's good for Northern Ireland is not good for Scotland. But the, the Tories say they wouldn't sanction it, George. So where does that leave you? Well, let, let, let's, 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 let's put it to them. Let's see what happens when the... The Scottish Parliament has always voted that sovereignty lies with the people of Scotland. If the Scottish Parliament, elected by the Scottish people, asks for a second, a second referendum, let's just see whether the Conservatives or Labour in England is willing to avoid that. Would they be willing to avoid that? Do you think a UK government would sanction it? Um, I, I can't see that at the moment because simply the people of Scotland don't want or need that and I think that the UK government would go along with what um, the evidence is showing from the polls to say that Scotland doesn't want it and we don't need another referendum. Now is not the time. Morris, what do you think? Well, I think the way we're hearing from George and Pamela at the moment is a rehearsal of what the arguments would be if the referendum was tomorrow. And it's uninspiring on both sides to me. Um, I think people, I think 2014 was a moment in time. I think quite a lot of people who voted yes, for example, were, you know, often also voted leave in 2016. Um, they were the, you know, very often the sort of people who were disenfranchised felt they wanted change, and yes, represented change in 2014, just as uh, Leave did in 2016. But there is still no um, direct line or equation between a yes vote and a remain vote, and that was Nicola Sturgeon's weakness in 2016. She assumed, as a lot of us did, that the remain vote in Scotland uh, would immediately strengthen uh, support for independence given that there was a majority for leave over the UK. Now that hasn't really happened and um, when you look at what's happening in the doorsteps or in uh, local elections and so on, there isn't an obvious groundswell towards independence that you would expect. I expected it in 2016 uh, and we haven't seen it. Yeah, George, what do you think about that? Support for Remain doesn't necessarily translate into support for independence. Well, uh, uh, people have been glued to the television sets for the last three or four days because the British, British political system has collapsed. It is in stasis. The choice is do nothing, watch the UK, UK economy go over the cliff edge with Scotland with it, or do something dramatic, which is to take Scotland out of the UK and look after our own affairs. It's a simple proposition. I cannot believe that when that proposition is put to people on the doorsteps, they won't vote the right way. OK, um, George, um, if, if um, Scotland wasn't granted a Section 30, would you be prepared, or do you think it would be feasible, to go ahead with a Catalan-style unofficial referendum? Would you be prepared to go for that? Well, well, we'll cross that bridge when, it come, when we come to it. But, you know, everyone... The, the, but it's something that has to be considered, George, because there's a good chance that that's going to happen. 
well, 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 let's wait and see. The, 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 the task at the moment is for um, people like myself to try and persuade the First Minister to push the button on India Ref 2. Let's do that. That's, where we, that's how we get out of this appalling situation at Westminster where nothing is happening, where the economy is facing collapse, where they've called out the reserve troops today in order to, in order right. to keep place George, together. George, Come on. what do you think Nicola Sturgeon's going to say? I mean, she's indicated that she's going to make clear her intentions. What do you think she's going to say? Well, I, 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 I've, I've, I've no, 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 no magic book to let me know what she's going to say. But I, what we're trying to do is to tell her loud and clear, shouting loud and clear from the grassroots, give us India Ref 2. Do you think uh, Nicola Sturgeon will hear what George, people like George Caravan are saying? No, because I, I can't see the, the government, the UK government, giving permission for another referendum before 2021, the Scottish Parliament elections. And to do that, she would need to have a, a Catalan style referendum. And I don't think Nicola Sturgeon's daft enough to go down it, that route. So we're not going to see a referendum. She election. is in a difficult position, isn't she? Because you know, she's going to lose the momentum of, of activists, isn't she, unless she does something well, soon? I, I think she always has, has one eye in that. Uh, I think she'll say enough to keep activists uh, active, as it were, but I, I think Nicola Sturgeon will wait and see the polls, if they do go well over 50, uh, in favour of uh, independence before she does anything. I think she's a cautious politician, leading a very cautious and conservative party. Yeah, and um, George, if she doesn't make some kind of declaration in the next few weeks about a timing of India F2, I mean, where does that leave you? What would what would you do in response to that? Well, your, your clip at the beginning showed her saying in, in Hollywood today that she would make such a statement. So I, I, I prefer to believe that we will hear something soon. But 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 when do you think a referendum might be held, or you know, possibly? Well, I mean, I. I, I a lot, a lot will depend on what happens with Article 50 in the EU if that gets moved back. I mean, I think it would be difficult to, at this stage to, to organise a referendum between now and the end of March. Um, but I, I, I would hope we get one this year. OK, and we've got time for two tweets. Scotland's Future says, at a time when all of our politicians should be focusing on resolving the Brexit impasse, Sturgeon's playing the only card she has for the hundredth time to try and distract her supporters from the deep crisis, her leadership. Um, but Joe McGuire says, with a no-deal Brexit, real possibility. What other time is right? Thank you all very much indeed for joining us this evening.